Well, I, I would say that if you're a nine-year teacher or, you know, that you're not, in fact, a beginning teacher. I, I think uh, many people, the vast majority of teachers, leave the profession after their first five years. So I think there's a sustainability issue. Now, to answer your question directly about our veteran teachers, I think our veteran teachers are often um, the leaders in, the, in their buildings. And I think when we talk about differentiated pay and rewarding um, leadership of their peers, um, that I think there can be an excellent opportunity to reward teachers more. In terms of the dollars and cents of this, if you continue to pour money into the scale, and that may very well be what the General Assembly decides to do, um, I, I think it, it. I think you know it's not an either or zero sum game. But continuing to pour money into the scale is expensive, and I don't think there's necessarily a connection to student achievement. I think there's more of a connection to student achievement when you have these channels and choices and career options so that you have these stackable raises based on performance, based on marketability, and based on leadership. Um, the devil's in the details. You're right. We've talked about it uh, ad nauseum for decades. Um, but I think we can really be a leader in this regard. I think there's an appetite for it at the General Assembly level, and I think it's really, really critically important that we listen to educators like James, and that it's not just, um, you know, policymakers and politicians that are making this, making these these kind of choices. It has to be owned by our educators. Um, so yes, I, I mean, I think that that's a way that, that you can reward um, both veteran teachers, whether you're a three-year teacher or a 30-year teacher, if you're. Um, performing and you're adding value to your school and to your profession and to your community, then you ought to be rewarded for that.